Welcome back to the New Fish Vlog Part 3. A bit different this week. My mate is in Serbia, fishing for England. So I've had to draft in the boy wonder, Sam Collett. And we're here at my local fishery actually, Barbie Banks. And Sam's never been here before, so it'll be interesting to see how he approaches it. I'll show you how I've been approaching it recently in the matches. But more importantly, we're just gonna have a chat because as we sign Sam up, We've sort of thrust him in, in front of you all on YouTube and it'd be nice just to get to know him a bit better. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to have a look at some tactics. More importantly, get to know Sam a bit better. And uh, yeah, so let's get on with it without further ado and uh, let's get some fish caught. It's somewhere new for me today, don't we? Barbie Banks. New venue, Barbie Banks. Doing a bit of, uh, let's zoom in over there, a bit of mudline fishing. Yeah. What do you reckon? Nice place, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. I mean, obviously it's the first time I've ever been and I've heard a lot about it before. I know like people like Mark Griffiths told me about it, lost oh. that, lost the camera on. Told no. me about it before and uh, the meaning's come really. And yeah, it's like a, it's a really, really nice place. It's obviously a big snake lake, all like nooks and crannies everywhere. And yeah, it's just been nice fishing up against an island and there's all sorts of fish in here, like F1s, little barbell carp and they're all different sizes. And yeah, it's just a nice change, Joe. It's really good, isn't it? I know, I know obviously you've been fishing here and enjoying it. So it's been nice to come along and have a go, really. Yeah, it's been, it's been great. I mean, I, 150 pound this on the open this week, 140 pound last week. It's been really good fishing. So I thought, I can salmon like it. Yeah, it's, it's lovely, isn't it? I mean, obviously I've been, been fishing a lot of sort of open water cart venues at the minute as well, and it's just nice to have a ship to the far bank and do something different for a bit of a change really as well. And we'll have a look at your tactics in a bit, but you've actually found a bit of a mud spot there, haven't you? Which is yeah, like I was. Before we come on the camera, I was just starting to catch a few and uh, they've actually like, there's obviously some sort of weed on the bottom or something and they've sort of like disrupted it. So I've had to like replumb and I've slightly gone to the right up against a bit of a bank to see if I can catch there. But it's quite interesting because obviously I've never fished this place, but I've heard a lot about it and a lot of people are sort of telling me, including yourself, Joe, like it's a good hard pellet venue, but so the fish, behind yeah, your boat, but... this is the trouble as well when you're doing this type of thing really you need to be tight against something because if you come off the bank the fish get obviously get behind your float and that's when you have your problems so when you're doing this sort of thing you always need to really be tight up against something yeah. so obviously looking at this peg today there's a fish yeah. little fish <laughs> don't know what that is obviously the water's just... a lot like little cat feeding at the minute isn't it? yeah i obviously had some good ones on it earlier but obviously since i've had to move spot i'm just like trying to work out what's better really but obviously when you look at this peg you've got quite a lot of good options so like Obviously, left hand side, you've got a nice far bank, and uh, it's obviously all nice and cut on that, but it's a bit deeper. But this sort of right hand side, you can get into like 18 inches deep, nice little carp. Obviously, that lends itself more to the sort of maggots, ground baits, that sort of style of bait. Whereas the hot and um, the deeper side, obviously, better for hard pellets because you get too many, uh, too many liners, yeah, too many liners and foul hookers. But we've obviously had a bit of a play around with each because obviously, it's not a match today, it's just nice to have a bit of a a mess about and get to know a venue a bit yep. and uh like i say it's it's hard to call it really because there's a lot of fish joe isn't there so the reason i wanted to obviously bring you on today obviously it was nice to get out fishing and that but i wanted to have a chat a little bit about your england career because you used to fish for england and stuff with the youth so yeah what we'll do we'll get fishing we'll have a little chat about that yeah no problem sec agonizingly second in a fish show qualifier yesterday yeah that's so we'll have a chat it? about that <laughs> and then we'll have a chat about the fishing and, and that'll do us so yeah I'm going to go catch a load of fish. I don't blame you, Joe. You can't wait to have a go, can you? <laughs> right, Sam, come on. Let's do some fishing. Yeah, go for it. So you're fishing that mud line. Yeah. I'm going to fish hard pellet. Yeah, we're having a bit of a battle here, aren't we? Well, I won't call it a battle because... Well, between the baits, we're having a bit of a... I'm going to lose, aren't I, if we have a battle? I don't know about that. But, well, I mean, I'm having a leisurely day. I've got my cup of tea. Seriously, having a nice day out, aren't we, Joe? Having a lovely day out. So... For those that don't know you that well, Sam, let's get let's let everyone get to know you a bit better because we've done several videos with you now, which everyone seems to really like, yeah. which is great. Where did your fishing start? I know you obviously you were with Guru before you came to us. Yeah. Um, you fished fish for England a couple of times. I saw you put a table on your own Facebook the other day. What you what are you rated? I think eight. It's quite funny really because obviously I think the. The way the sort of rankings work is, I think you, I think it's something like six results count or something, and I only fished three times, or somehow like eight. I found it quite funny. So, like the under twenties. What age group were you when you fished in for England then? Yeah, so basically, um, the FIP said 
age groups to change round. So it's, I think the first year I fished it, it went like under 18s, then it changed to 20s after that. But basically the first year I got picked, it was um, 2016 and it was for Portugal. So it was a place called Santa Justa. And uh, basically what happened was you'd have the, our age group was on Santa Justa and the under 25, was, under 25 uh, age groups on Carouche. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so basically got selected for that. And what we got told about the venue is basically fishing a big waggler across to the far bank, well, near the far bank. And you've actually fished like eight or nine foot deep, which is quite unusual because it must have been only sort of a few feet deep. But anyway, so the winter previous to getting selected, basically all my time is spent chucking big wagglers at like making fishery late one. <laughs> So trying to get, get uh, used to the wagglers and Yeah, stuff. that age I never used to drive as well. So luckily I've got great parents and used to drop me off at making. So like freezing cold winters down. I used to go in the far bank of late one, chucking these great big wagglers sort of like, I think between sort of 40 and 50 metres. Yeah. And um, basically I put all my graft into that. And then when it comes to the tribes, at a place called, I think it's called Willow Lakes in uh, St Albans. Oh yeah, that St Albans fishing. Yeah, the one uh, Graham West goes to a lot. Yep. And we had a trial there and it was basically big waggler fishing, fixed waggler, you know, eight or nine foot deep for like skimmers and bream. And uh, ended up ended up basically getting picked. So I got sort of quite really, well, I think I got really good at it for like how much time I put into it. And I was obviously lucky enough. Well, I can, I can imagine, Sam, knowing you now. Yeah. How good you are. I can imagine if you put the time into it, I bet you were amazing at it. Yeah, like... <laughs> I'm not like a big-headed person or anything, but I must admit I like I felt like I was good at it because obviously I put the time in and I got everything with catapults right and yeah. stuff like that. I was obviously used to fishing to like feeders at the time and stuff as well. So yeah, luckily I caught a lot of bream skins on the trial. I got picked for Portugal, so obviously I was buzzing with that. And then basically that summer period it was spent um, basically doing what I do normal, like my commercials and stuff like that, but. Also practicing again, keeping sort of sharp on me waggler fishing and basically getting used to fishing with like sticky mags, all the sort of baits you'd use out in Portugal. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so obviously we had like a meeting on the River Thames and stuff and basically got all the kit ready to go. And when we went across there, the heat was like unbelievable. It's oh, at that time I've in Portugal. I've had a disaster. Yeah. But yeah, it's that sort of time in Portugal now and them like forest fires and stuff. It was like 40, I think it was about 45 degrees from memory, and it was like, um, like ridiculously hit, uh, hot. Not, not very good for a man of your skin tone, is it? No, no, it's like chalk and cheese, basically. <laughs> so I had brolly up, but yeah, the venue, like that's I That's not that Carouche place, is it? You what, sorry? It's not that Carouche place, is it? No, that's where the under 25s fish. Okay. So basically, I've heard of that one. Yeah, it's like a similar venue, similar width, but it's slightly a few miles away. With like barbel in it now, is it? Yeah, barbel? so basically they're like a little barbel, crassio, odd catfish, that sort of thing. And uh, practice week, the fishing was really hard, which they always are. A lot of the time on the World Champs, the fishing's hard, especially early in the week because the venue changes. Yeah. And uh, basically tactics wise, it was, it was pretty simple. It was a waggler, sort of towards the far bank trees, that sort of line and a pole line, I think the limit back then was 11 and a half metres, I'm sure it was. Right. And basically a pole line at 11 and a half metres. And all that we're doing was, we're fishing sticky mag on the bottom and we're also loose feeding hemp and uh, hemp and maggots, just trying to draw fish. And you're basically fishing for little barbel and crassios. And uh, basically the waggler was really good though. I got like, I felt I got grips with the waggler, but unfortunately on the first match day, all this floating weed come down. They actually had to put the match off for a bit. Oh, really? Yeah, like, it just randomly sort of come down. You couldn't even chuck a waggler. So basically our team plan was a bit like, what do we do here? And uh, none of us did brilliant on the first day because obviously that sort of changed all the plans. And in that sort of last half an hour of that match, I sort of, something clicked in the head and I found like something that worked. But it was actually fishing like eight inches on the bottom and just balling a little, bit like F1 fishing in this country, but obviously slightly different because I've laid the line on, because yeah. you've basically got a bit of a, tiny bit of a flow. And, oh, Joe. Oh, Sam, no. <laughs> no. that's a disaster. No. I've just lost a, like a six pounder. You've just got yeah. stuck in the tree. About right, that is. I was about to say, why did your England career come to an end? And then yeah, that, that, this is why. So, Sam. Yeah. 
we, have, we just had to cut them because we had a mini disaster. Yeah, we both did, didn't we? I lost the fish and then you, well, we, I won't even say what you did. <laughs> um, that so was a bit of a mare, didn't we? Yeah, let's, let's pick up from where you, so you sussed something out, did you? Yeah, so basically, obviously, like I was saying, obviously all this weed drifted down and it meant like the Wagner fishing sort of went out the window yeah. and it put more of a pole match. And uh, basically, we're all, we did, none of us did brilliant because obviously we were so confident in this um, Wagner approach. We had been working well all week and um, basically in the last half an hour, I caught quite a few and uh, basically all I was doing was I was fishing sort of a rig about eight inches over depth because there was like a steady flow on it. And I thought, I'm going to try and target some very slightly better fish. I mean, there weren't big fish whatsoever, but they were slightly better. A lot of the fish were sort of like two to four ounce, but you get in the odd one, it was like six ounce maybe, yeah. five or six ounce. Yeah, and basically it was like feeding a little tiny little ball of sticky mag. So it just solid down the bottom and just like laying a bit of line on, just trying to target the better fish. And yeah, in the last half an hour, you sort of got me out of jail, really, because obviously, like I say, we were, none of us were doing brilliant. And I think, I can't remember where I come in my section, but it weren't brilliant <laughs> from memory. It weren't the best match. And, but I sort of felt like I was happy because I worked some out for the second day, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because, like I say, it was none of the faults that the venue just changed like that. Because we all had this plan and it just went out the window. But going into the second day, like, we all, like, slightly altered a plan what we were doing and I drew somewhere I can't remember the number because it's quite a few years ago but somewhere in a section at the top now I, like, I couldn't basically all the weed were gone at this point so it's back like fishing the normal venue so basically your sort of plan was waggler early on you're in the far bank now I'm not oh I never got fish look <laughs> I hope it drags it out there's a fish on it and yeah, but, I'm stuck yeah basically um Damn, this is just a disaster. No, no, disaster. Basically, I started on a waggler for a bit, and I caught what I could for sort of, from memory, about half an hour. And then, basically, I couldn't wait to go on that pole line, because from what I learned, and it's exactly the same, just putting these little balls of sticky mag in, so it's rock solid, going straight to the bottom and fishing over depth. And I ended up having a really good day for the venue. I mean, I think it was only around three to three or four kilo from memory. That sounded nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, and uh, basically I, I won the match. Um, Doing what you saw. Yeah, do, yeah, basically. And then the team wise, we did really well. I think, like I say, it's quite a few years ago, but we had a good result. I think we had like maybe a second and a few thirds or something like that. And we actually like got a bronze medal in the end, which considering day one, we didn't do brilliant. was a really good result. And obviously like, that second day, like, it sort of got me thinking of the next year, like, oh, like, I'm gonna wanna try even harder, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think we all did. So basically, the second year, so this was 2017, I believe it was, um, it was in a, in a scar in Ireland. Now, I was really looking forward to this because I'd never been to Ireland. But Another thing as well, like a lot of islanders associate with feeder fishing, but obviously in the float world championships, you can't use feeders. So it was obviously, again, this the tactics we got told for this sort of venue, it was going to be slider fishing and basically pole fishing for ropes. So 11 and a half metres and a slider. So again, spent a lot of time practicing my slider and me sort of rope fishing, long pole rope fishing, chucking ground bait me float, get catapulting um, little balls of ground bait up me wagglers and stuff like that. So basically, so we went loads to, and loads of practice. Yeah, that's like, the thing because you go on these world championships and you can't just roll up and uh, hope to do any good because obviously the, ha the standard's so high and it's not a tactics. It's not tactics we do every week in England. Yeah. Like slider fishing, I, I really enjoyed it, but it's not really. Yeah, you never going to do that here, are you? No, that's it. So yeah, talking to the venue when we got there. I mean, one one thing I will say as well before we start, we got really lucky with the weather. Like it didn't blow a gale, which it can do in, apparently in Ireland. Apparently. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've we, like I say, it's the only time we've been and we got um, away with it. But yeah, so basically this venue, it's in Escara. Obviously, I heard the feeder team did really well there, and I know Steve Ringer won there. I've like, seen the fishing was good, so I really couldn't wait. Yeah, and basically practice week, same as always. The fishing 
basically started hard and got better and better as more bait goes in, which always happens, what it seems. And yeah, so basically all your match was, it was a, a slider and we found a certain depth. I can't, I think it was about 20, I can't remember, 18 to 20 foot or something like that. I can't really remember. This was obviously quite a few years ago. And then basically a pole line 11 and a half metres where we'll be throwing basically balls of ground bait in, little sort of hand-sized balls in and fishing for roach. Yeah. And the first day I drew, I think it was C, I think it was C section. I can't, my memory's terrible. It was either B or C section. And yeah, I had a good day. I think I started on a waggler. I caught a few. Then I basically fed the pole, went straight on the pole and it was ropes you chucked. And I ended up with about, I think it was 11 or 12 kilos. It was deep as well, it was like top five it's deep. Great, and great fishing, man. Yeah, it's really like aggressive fishing, which I enjoyed. You could feel a lot of bait. And basically, every time you, you caught a fish, you'd be chucking a ball of ground bait in over your float. Got like loads of bait, like using pretty much all your allowance. And yeah, I ended up winning my section. I had, I'm sure it was 11 or 12 kilo of nearly all roach. So that was obviously a good start. But unfortunately though, the team, Struggled. I'm not sure if it was a few bad draws or whatever, but he didn't do too brilliant. Um, and on the second day, I drew, I think, I think it was D, I think it might have been D section or C section, I can't remember which. And. Am I having a disaster here, Sam? You're having a nightmare. I'm missing a few bites. I've lost now. the yeah. rig. And the wind was slight, from what I can remember, because there was a lot of ropes the day before, I'm sure I started on the pole. Obviously, fed me ground bit on the waggler, and I started on the pole, and it wasn't great. I caught a few, and then it just got slower and slower. And then basically, become a waggler match after that, and I caught a few decent skimmers and stuff like that on a slider. And I think I had pretty much vert basically the same weight. I think it was about 11 kilo, which in a four hour match or three hour match, whatever it was. Yeah, it's amazing. It's, it's it? a really good weight, and like everyone caught. Yeah, ended up third in my section that day. Again, unfortunately though, like obviously we all know you go as a team event, but unfortunately the team didn't do any good, but a bit, bit of a bonus for me, I managed to get a uh, individual silver. How Over far off were you? Two winning? days. I think, I'm not sure if the lad got a first or a second or two wins, I'm not, because obviously it's a few years ago. Yeah. But this Polish lad uh, won, so fair play to him, but that's say it's a bit of a bit of sweet when you're team fishing. It's obviously nice to get something, but Obviously, you go as a team event, do you know what I mean? Yeah, of course. Yeah, and then we last So you got yourself of... a silver, which is amazing. Yeah, that's it. And uh, basically, the year after that, it was in Spain. And uh, I can't remember the name of the venue, but it's basically like a, a big sort of river. It didn't flow much or anything, but it's full of Carassio. And uh, basically, to cut a long story short, we all sort of, I think we come fourth, but none of us sort of, did absolutely brilliant there. Again, it was ever so humid, and it's just the type of fishing like none of us had really done, and it was quite sort of, as people know, when they fish these world championships, when you go, you've got basically a week to try and learn it, and we just didn't never click onto it as such. But yeah, that was basically my three years of fishing for England, really, so I what, enjoyed my time. Obviously, you obviously did very well. Yeah. Um, how can we start? Because um, obviously some guys like Christian Jones, for example. Not another one. <laughs> like Christian, for example, as he fished for England and decided it wasn't for him. Yeah. Um, even though, you know, he's got the, the most amazing talent. Could easily probably fish for England if he put his mind to it. Yeah. Um, yourself, obviously. Put your mind to it. I'm sure you would be there or thereabouts. Come, the, you know, the time or whatever. What, yeah. what, what made you stop? Because I know obviously Christian stopped. So yeah. There must um, be a reason. It's basically you. Obviously, you get a bit older, and uh, don't get me wrong. I'd never say never to it again. Yeah. Like it's just. I think everyone goes through phases where they want to do something, and then you know, like you go on to the next challenge and stuff like that. Yeah. But I think what did it for me was obviously. A lot of us grew up fishing commercials, didn't we? And you obviously see a lot of these big matches where the prize money's good. And to try and win one of them... So the lure and the carrot of that big yeah, match. Yeah, to try and do... Like, I do quite a bit of sort of 
feedy fishy like I can do a bit of everything but to try and win that and well try and do both basically it's very hard yeah and very hard because you think as well like to get good at what you're doing abroad the tactics especially like if you've got to practice things that we don't do here you've got to put a lot of time into it yeah it's the, and it's the same with your commercial fishing isn't it it's not yeah you can't that needs respect as well doesn't it it's like yeah and it's like it got to the point where i was thinking like i can't give a hundred percent at both if that makes sense yep and i sort of felt like obviously people say winning these sort of events and stuff it's not about the money but you've got to think for people our age sort of like christian for example yeah, it's, it's, it's a, a massive it's a helping amount hand. of money when you're young. Yeah, and obviously a world championship's another thing with it is, especially nowadays, a lot of it's self-funded and the amount of time, effort and money you have to put into it, and obviously, don't worry, it's great, but what you can put into going to commercial and winning an event like 50, 60 grand for kids our age, it's like, it's a massive bonus. And... Uh, it just it's just like a lot of time and effort like I, if, i'd love to do both don't get me wrong but i feel like at the minute commercial fishing is probably more beneficial for me yeah like we all say oh it's not about the money but i like say it's not but you've got to think obviously being a young a young age spending thousands of pounds going abroad or having a chance of winning a big amount of money like it's more beneficial at our age yeah i mean you look at christian for example don't remember he's, he's fantastic and uh you can tell christian basically wants to do fishing for a career which a lot of people would but if he did if he went down the international route and don't get me wrong he could have done brilliantly he wouldn't have won that fishing menu did last year and it's no. that sort of set him up yeah do you yeah, know what i mean so you gotta look of... at it and look at it and decide what you want to do really but that's the sort of decision I come to. But like I say, I like I like different challenges, so I'd never say never to it again. But just at this time in life, it. Yeah, like I say, um, I just I just not, we all have times where like you you enjoy doing something, then you change and stuff like that. I just think it, you know it seems a shame when you've got anglers as good as you and Christian and 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 there's something that's missing. Yeah. That makes you you both want to go away from that international thing and I, I don't I can't put my finger on it there's obviously something that's not attractive about it yeah like I say I, it's it, I think the more I think the thing is with it is the, the amount of time you've got to put into it and then everything it's not really the money because obviously the experience is really enjoyable yeah but you've got obviously you think as a youngster growing up everything's getting more expensive yeah it's almost and you think impossible i'm saying you've got to put to realistic i've seen it been there done it to compete you've got to put the time and effort in you've got to go out a few times a week because obviously it's not like what we're doing today which we've all done for years it's you're specifically practicing for a certain method Style, and yeah. type of venue and you're putting everything into it because you have to because you're learning from scratch all of a sudden a lot of things and obviously putting that in you're putting a lot of money in time and effort and like I say, it's you either do one or the other, and it's quite for like people our age. It, you're not talking a few hundred pounds; you're talking thousands. Yeah. To go away. But it's, again, it's each to their own, and I wouldn't never rule it out again. Do you know what I mean? Like, might be a time where I've decided I'd, I'd fancy another go at it. But that's that's the main thing at the minute for us. I think it's just you got to go down a route you feels right for you. Yeah. And there's. A lot of opportunity with these big money events that yeah they're about now you've got to, they might not be about forever that's it yeah you've got to kind of try and make hay a little bit sort of yeah i've had a bit of a mare here sam i've, I've tried to find new spots just change yeah, the subject a little bit and I, I've, i'm back on my original spot now because i keep getting snagged <laughs> <laughs> having a bit of a mare Oh, I'm having a right western, to be honest. I've lost... It. Since we've been filming this, I've lost a rig. I've lost three fish. Don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, coming back to it as well, though, you, Christian's a perfect example out of anyone because basically 
you, you see how much time and effort he's put in. Yep. So you could compare it to World Championship, basically. He's got himself to a level now, which is pretty much... Yeah, yeah. When he, he's that good. If he gets on anywhere near a peg... Yeah. Like, this is, we're filming this before Fisher Mania, and I think he's won every practice match he's gone to at West. That's it, yeah. So if he gets on half a peg, there's, there's a great chance he'll be double Fisher champion. Yeah, like I say, he's... But he's fully deserved it. He's put absolutely everything into it. I mean, this is what I was going on about as well. Like, to, to get to the top of your level, you've got to choose one or the other. Yeah. Commercial right. or international, which I think a lot of people have said before. And like I say, if say Christian tried to do both, he probably wouldn't be at the level he was now no. because he's solely gone down that route. And say if he did, he went the same. So say if he went out practicing slider fishing and everything yeah, you've got to do to be in the England team, he could have been world champion by now. Who knows? I, I just know how much, um, having lived with Matt Godfrey for a spell. Yeah, that's it. He's another great example. I, yeah. I know how much effort he had to put in, and he absolutely that international thing is his everything. That's it. Yeah, they're almost like they're the two best examples. Like you compare Matt, everything to him is the world champs. That's the rule. And he's the other way. Like if he if he put all of his effort into commercial fishing, yeah, hundred percent, he'd win a lot. It's just he's just that good. So I think. They're the, like you say, they're the perfect examples, aren't they? That's it. Like they're like they're the two be best people to sort of compare with. Like I say, Matt puts everything into his World Championship, that type of sort of fishing. And like I say, he can do anything because he's such a good angler. But like he does brilliant at what he does. But he has to put the time in to keep at that level. Whereas like I say, Christian, he puts the time into his commercial fishing, and that's why that both of them at such high standards. Yeah. Because of the, the probably uh, the not if not the best at what they do. Yeah, dedicated to what they're doing. Yeah. So, so it, tur it turns out, Sam, that the, the spot that I decided was the best at the start is the best. Yeah, you're having, a, you're having it a bit better now. And I'm just, I was just flailing around for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Are you catching well? I've just gone on to a uh, hard pellet now, and I've had a few. We won't tell them why you've come off your mud line. No, well. Uh, <laughs> He rigs be... in a bit of a bird's nest. That's uh, the only thing I want to say about that. <laughs> Tangled around your mic now. I'm pull a bung somehow. It's like the nightmare vlog, this one. Yeah, but it's real though, Joe, isn't it? Real. It happens. So I'm having another cup of tea while I'm uh, thinking about it. So, yesterday. Yeah. Second in a fish, the last Fishermania qualifier of the year. Yeah. How annoying is that? It is and it isn't. I mean, don't get me wrong, seconds... Like, get, don't get me wrong, second in a, a match like that size, you can get a good payout and everything like that. It's a nice day out, don't get me wrong, but... You're there to win, aren't yeah, you? Yeah. I don't like to have any sort of negative... If, say anything negative or anything like that, but basically... Come on, hit me with it. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a... Bloke it won, Ricky Small, absolutely fair play to him. I mean, you've got to understand as well, like, it's not his fault. No. Like, if, if I drew there... You'd be buzzing, wouldn't I won. you? you still, yeah, that's it. Like I say, he, someone's got to draw it, and he drew it and made the most of it. So he's drawn a peg with loads of room, basically. Yeah, but fair play, still got to catch him. Yep. Like, well, best of luck in the final now, but it's not his fault. You can't you can't say it's his fault at all. I do think this, is, this loads basic... of room thing is typical in qualifiers anyway, isn't it? Yeah, so basically... What happened was, he was on, I'm not sure of the peg numbers, so I was on 16 Little Adams on the other side. Um, about the high 20s, 30s? I don't know, I don't know. Eventually. Yeah, I'm not, it's not somewhere I've been loads, but basically he's been on this bank by himself. He's had about six or seven empty pegs. But the annoying thing is, like, obviously if we drew it, you wouldn't be moaning, but you still get the gist. But, like, when you're paying all that money and everything to go and traveling all their miles and you sort of get these no shows it seem to seem to dominate so basically by other people not turning up or getting room and it gets a bit frustrating at times I think no but... shows is, is one of the most frustrating things in match fishing and yeah I, I noticed with that glee festival that you fished recently there was like on the last day no shows and yeah don't get me wrong there's times when it can't be avoided but it affects the result doesn't it that's it yeah i, I mean feel. Like Get I say, I don't, I don't want to sound negative or anything like that. Like, oh, you're only you're complaining because you didn't win or anything like that. It's not, it's not the case, but it's like a lot of the qualifiers you go to, it's space in it that it's wins. More and more, and uh, it'd be nice if organised just say, so like, 
If you're not here at, say, quarter to nine, we're going to re-peg it and make it fair a match. Yeah, that re-pegging thing, you just don't... I've organised matches when I used to be on the magazine and don't get me wrong, it's a nightmare. When you're trying to deal with 100 peggers and God knows what, but like you say, on the shoe's on the other foot when you're paying good money to go and... Yeah. There was only ever going to be one winner yesterday, wasn't there? <coughs> yeah, that's, that's just the most frustrating thing. It's just like... You put in the time, the money, the effort, and you know it's like it, they get sold as drawing these qualifiers. I mean, I've, I've spoke to a few people like they can be, they can almost do your head in because yeah, I won't do them. No, I've got a love hate relationship with them. Like I used to love them, but nowadays I'm starting to go off them more. I like just fishing normal matches. But... I um, in fact, let, let's discuss that because someone commented on a, a video on my channel a couple of weeks ago, and uh, it was a chap called Trev Chapman who's. He watches all the new fish videos. He watches all the um, all my videos. So yeah. Great, you know, great subscriber. And he said, "Right, let's, I want to ask you about the elephant in the room. Why don't you fish qualifiers?" Meaning me. Yeah. Um, and I, it's not an elephant in the room at all. I just, I just don't enjoy them. I, no. I committed a summer to them about five or six years ago, before my kids were born, and I hated every second of it. Yeah. I never had a good day fishing once. That's a lie, actually. I had one good day at Tunnel Barn. Caught hundred pound, but I was still like hundred pound off the winner. Yeah. And um, but I was going to these venues and catching one F1, two F1s, a carp and a few roach. And I spent the whole summer driving around catching nothing. And I don't, even though I work in fishing, I don't actually have loads of time to go fishing myself. It's a bit yeah. better now, don't get me wrong. So I need to go and have a good day fishing. And I yeah. just wasn't getting that at all. And I think there's. If you, don't get me wrong. If you need, if, you, if that's what you want to do, yeah, then that's what you've got to put up with, isn't it? <coughs> like Jamie and all them guys who commit to, the, yeah. to that, they just turn a blind eye to it and get on with it. But for me, who doesn't get the chance to then, say, if I go on a qualifier on the Wednesday, I might not get to go fishing again for another two weeks. That's it, hundred percent. So it was it was leaving such a bad taste in my mouth that I was like, no, I can't do this anymore, and that is. Ultimately, the reason why I just give it up, and I'm not saying I won't do it again, now I've got a little bit more time on my hands, but yeah, it just really put me off, I've got to be on it. Yeah, another thing as well with them is, like I say, I, I completely agree with that. And the cost is it? unbelievable, isn't it? That's it, I mean, realistically, your minimum, your cheapest one's going to be about £100 to fish. Yeah. And uh, obviously the price of bait's gone up. You've, obviously you've got to think of fuel, breakfast, your ticket and everything like that, but... Well, I, I um, obviously a lot of people will be able to relate to me because I've got a young family, two kids under, yeah. uh, under six. And the price of food at the minute, it's eye-watering how much my shopping bill is. Yeah. And, um, oh, wait till you see what I've got here. What's it, um, golden tent or something? And if I told, if I suddenly started spending 800 quid a month on matches or whatever it costs yeah. look at this look at this everyone yeah it'd just be that i just how could i justify that look at that beauty sam what is it oh that's i might as well pack up now that's an instant, instant winning, isn't it? Yeah. so yeah I, i've got full admiration for the guys who can your andy powers and jamie's and christians yeah. who chase that dream and hats off to them but it just isn't for me and i fished eight opens in eight weeks and i've not caught less than 140 pounds yet that's the thing, I think. And, and I'm enjoying every minute of it. I'm catching loads of fish. I'm fishing local, so it's relatively cheap. Yeah. I'm getting a few quid back, and I'm absolutely loving it. And I just think sometimes that lure of the carrot takes away from why we all do it in the first place. Yeah. Which I is think, going fishing and enjoying it. I mean, I've, I've said this, especially, I used to love when I was younger, but this last few years, I've had a proper like, love-hate hate relationship with them, and honestly, I think if it, I had to just do one of them a week, I'd completely go fishing because, like you say, the most important thing, it's a hobby and you've got to enjoy what you're doing and you go fishing to catch fish and for whatever reason, some of my little pet eights for these qualifiers, they peg it really tight, so obviously they've basically got to make the money to have a, a prize pot, which I completely get, but when you sit in there catching no fish, you're defeating the objects. It's an expensive day and the minimum thing you want, if, is to catch fish, you want a day's fishing. Yeah, it's not a lot of fun, is it? Like, if you've got a day's fishing every time, you'd be happy, but it's a bit of a, it's a difficult one, really, because obviously, if you don't enter them, you can't win them. No, you can't. 
No, it's like I've, what I try to do now is I try to go to venues I actually wouldn't mind fishing. So like obviously, yeah. If you, I mean, if you stick to like Lindome, you're always going to get a great day there. Yeah. Partridge, you know, Tunnel Bar, and it, them venues are so good that you're always going to get a good day, aren't you? That's it. I think as long as you oh, don't do street. too many, maybe do. It dep obviously it depends how much you can go fishing. Like for example, you it has to go once a week. You've got to pick very carefully because you want to enjoy your day out you go Damn well. when you go and say if for me i've got a bit of time in the minute or your full-time anglers they can go and have a, a bad day and we'll spin out the car park and forget about it and it doesn't matter because they've got they can go out a few times a week i think that's another thing do you know what i mean like if you could go say three or four times a week yeah, a bad day on a qualifier and you can run a few opens you forget about it you but can like for you, you can sacrifice your day can't you yeah if you your average guy gets one or two days at a weekend. They want to enjoy the in the weekend, and if you're spending all that money and not enjoying it, ultimately, what is the point? Mm -hmm. And I, I must take credit to the gaffer and uh, Lee. I, I don't think feeder masters is the same. Yeah. I, I fished feeder masters a few years, and that was a totally different experience. I felt like I was going to venues and catching fish, and yeah, because there's free qualifiers. You're not trying to win the match off pegs that can't win the match. You're trying to yeah. win the zone. I hundred percent agree. I mean, obviously, I do. I do quite a lot of feeder fishing as well when I, I get the chance because I do. I do really enjoy feeder fishing, and uh, I must admit. The feeder master qualifiers are probably my favourite because again, like you say, you don't have to draw an absolute yeah, you don't fire. Have to win the match, do you? No, you like I say, it's sensible. You be sixty people on you, which is not too many on the venue. You might draw a not so good area, but you've got to win your twenty pegs. There's a lot of pegs you can do it from, and everything's just right. Like for example, the qualifiers. A lot of the time, you've got a good chance of getting a day's fishing. It's sensibly pegs, and when you go on the final, the final's almost like a holiday. It's a nice, relaxed atmosphere. Like oh, I've well, oh. I, I remember going on um, at Tamar and your mum and dad were there and... Yeah, like I say, we just treat, like, treat it as a holiday. It's just a nice, relaxed experience, like what Mick and Lee have done at Feeder Masters. Honestly, I just wish there was a commercial event exactly the same format. Yeah. Because it's, like I say, it's... Out of, the, out of all the qualifiers I do, it's by far the most enjoyable. And, like, the experience once you're there, like... I love natural fishing as well and... Uh, like the fishing's great at Tamar, everything's dead right about it. Like the payout's brilliant. It's very social. It's sounds like, like I'll tell you what, it sounds like we're um, trying to get a pay rise off the boss here, doesn't it? Yeah, it does, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it does, but yeah, like it is true though. Yeah, it's dead true. Like I say, like feed honestly, feeder masters is my favourite one. Cause it's just like relaxing as well, like, for example, last year I went to the shop and I just bought <laughs> Load of Preston pre-tied feeder rigs. The, uh, is it N30, Joe? Yeah. 14 uh, N30 pre-ties, and a lot I did really well on them. Like, I didn't draw so well the second day, but I come second on the match the first day. And it's basically like, once you've got your rods ready, they're ready, and all you've got to do is change your link, and it's just that minimal prep. It's just so enjoyable, I think. There's a lot to be said for that, isn't there? Yeah. Like, I, literally, at the minute, I'm at that stage where I could just go feed a fishing. I absolutely love it. It's sort of my release from What about that, this then? Sort of what about committing to that and the England sort of feeder thing? Yeah, that, that, I say, that's... To me, that'd be appealing, because I've obviously... Yeah. I really like feeder fishing, like... So I've sort many. of grown up on a feeder as well, like, I've done it. Yeah, you fish very all the time, and... Yeah. Yeah, you see, that... For me, it's just like it'd be appealing as well because, like I say, the prep buys. I know obviously guys have a lot of rods, but it's not as bad if you're not, not as intensive. Make, if that makes it? sense. Because I do think you're an angler who could easily do that. Yeah. But that, no, that's the wrong. Easily is not the wrong thing. I, I mean, you've you've that. more than got the talent and drive to do that. Yeah. If I was Dean, I'd be uh, having a chat. <laughs> I would because you need some like younger anglers in the background. That, yeah, like I say, um, see that, I know, obviously that team, it's like, everyone in it's so, so good, it'd take years, but like, it that's forever, something though, that would interest me, like, I, I just enjoy feeder fishing. Like I, say the, like I was saying earlier, though, like, the float one, there's a lot, a lot of stuff you've got, like, to get really good at that, you've got to put so much years of time to get any good at it, do you know what I mean? Yeah. 
But the feeder one, like, as long as you can chuck a feeder, don't get me wrong, as long as you can chuck a feeder along and you've sort of got half the right, you, you can put the time in, you can adapt to it a bit, I hope, a bit faster. I know, obviously, it takes years for the guys to learn what to do, but, like, it just seems prep-wise, you know, like, because obviously it's just feeder, it's more, like, specific. Yeah. Like, you're not going to need whips, bolo rods, waggler rods, slider rods, yeah. that sort of thing. It's feeder, yeah, that's got, it. You've got your setup, haven't you? Yeah. I think that... That'll be something that I, I can see you doing in the future. Yeah, it just like it just looks like really enjoyable that feeder fishing side of it. I've always I've, I follow the feeder, uh, the world champs. Like I've, I follow it. I've like, obviously seen the results. Obviously, like come third in Serbia. And yeah, it just looks a really good, well organised setup, doesn't it? The feeder side. Yeah, obviously, Drennan really behind them now. It just looks really good. Yeah, it's really good. Tell you what, yeah, I've got a bit, I do. I must admit, like, if I had to pick one sort of fishing, I could sort of do as a pleasure fishing. It'd be feeder fishing and on natural venues, hundred percent. Oh, really? Yeah, like, if if I had to go pleasure fishing nowadays, I had to pick somewhere. I'd, I'd always go on a natural venue or some fishing for something I, I don't normally do. That's my sort of. That's what you like doing. Yeah, that's what I like doing now because obviously. We do this week in, week out. I don't know, I absolutely love it, but when you go pleasure fishing, I want to do something, go somewhere nice, wild, and you're not sure what you're going to catch. That's what I find more like exciting. You've recently fished the uh, Glebe Cup, was it? Yeah, Glebe Cup, yeah. So Another Gary second. Rogers' is Glebe Cup, so it's like between On The Flyer and Catch More Media. They both sort of sort of work with each other. So yeah, ca so Catch More and um, On The Flyer are running festival after festival at the minute, and if you want... To do a bit of that sort of fishing, then there's a, there's a festival on every week at the minute, isn't there? Yeah, like I said, there's plenty of great venues and festivals around at the minute. You sport for choice really nowadays for what's on. So, I see some really good festivals. Obviously, I want to talk about how you did because you had a colossal weight, especially on the first day. Yeah. But we've got to give a shout out to my pace fishing hero, Luke Bamford, who I've not not known but been aware of since he was a teenager because I used to go on a um, holiday in Lincolnshire and there was a venue I used to go to called Moon Lakes and Luke used to go there and win all the time and he was only a kid then so I've always kept like kept an eye on his results and stuff and he's just phenomenal isn't he and he ended up winning that festival didn't he yeah taking you clean out he did he, he took last day he took to be fair I would give myself I didn't draw very well but I still no you drew terrible yeah but I still think it would have been hard to beat his weight anywhere I drew if I'm honest. I did draw completely wrong, but yeah, well, if we talk about the festival. Yep. It's basically, it's a three day festival and you split into three zones over three days and the first day is an open draw. So basically the zones were Lake One, uh, Lakes Five and I think it was five and six and four and seven for your zones today. And first day I've drawn like 78 on pool five and uh, good peg. I know Joe obviously did a line match on there on the David Orr Memorial match and I know oh, you yeah, was on the same peg weren't you yeah same peg and obviously I knew you caught down the edge that day and I know it's a good edge peg anyway so I was, I was more than happy and uh, yeah I basically about that. yeah and I started on basis I started short I think I caught one and then uh, I fished a feeder for like the next two hours I had like 50 to 60 pound but obviously Luke was fishing his like the weather as well, I knew he'd empty it because the weather sort of, it went a bit cooler and it, a bit of a wind and uh, I knew it'd suit Luke for his pace fishing so I knew it was going to be really dangerous, which he always is anyway. And after two hours he's got £140 on his long pole and pace, I'm thinking, what can I do here? And uh, I basically took a gamble, I filled my edge in early, in my right edge, after two hours I filled it in and uh, Ten minutes later, it was all coloured up, and I thought, to win, you've got to fish positive. Like, I was that far behind, I thought, I've got nothing to lose here. And I basically had the best three hours margin fishing I've ever experienced. <laughs> and honestly, I'm not joking, I had 50 and to 60 pounds. Did you catch on the right-hand side like I did? Yeah, and that, in that, that was a little bit of a cutout. Yeah. And uh, I fished down there, and honestly, it was absolutely solid, like, ridiculous. And then, I'm not... The thing is, it sounds ridiculous. It almost sounds like I'm talking a load of rubbish when I said I had 50, 60 pound after two hours. And 
Honestly, ask Gary Rogers, my clicking was like spot on in my nets and that's what I had. And uh, to cut a long story short, I basically just filled it in with ground bait, marine halibut, green swim stem, a few two mil pellets and dead maggots and I've either fished double worm or dead maggot on the top. And uh, at the end of the five hours, I had £342. <laughs> which is which unbelievable, isn't it? Won the match and yeah, and I somehow overtook Luke on that day, which he didn't, he sort of tailed off a bit and my peg was just a joke how good it was and I thought obviously I had a great lead going into the second day which was about £100 so yeah and uh, so that fine. obviously with it being on weight the festival great start yeah that's it it was a great start and uh, obviously I still Luke was saying obviously like oh that's a a big lead to catch up on but I I said to him like look what are you doing like I say, it's all about the draw as well at times. Like if you draw one of the really good pegs at the Glebe, 300 pounds more than capable. And uh, coming on to the second day, I've gone and I've drawn uh, peg 105, which I was happy with. You know, I'm, late seven's a brilliant late. Like you'd always take it every day of the week. But then Luke's gone and drew 98, which for me, I couldn't have got. He couldn't have got a better peg. So he's so in the corner. That's terrible for me, but. Uh, obviously, I thought, I sort of knew he catch 300 pounds there, doing what he does, and I, again, I've had a really, really good day. I've had, I've caught everything on the feeder, apart from four fish on the pole. I just couldn't catch on the pole that day. Yeah. The wind was down the other end, I think that's not helped it, but I've, look, I've caught on the feeder. And I've had 200 and, I think I had 254 pounds, I think it was. And I come second with that. But Luke on 98, as a feed, he had £317, so obviously he clawed that lead to about £30. And basically, the Glebe, £30, nothing, it could go either way. Yeah. So that, both It us, really is nothing now, isn't it? Yeah, so both of us knew it sort of come down a bit. You need, both of us really sort of knew we needed an early number on late one, so sort of like one to eight area. Because so it's you're consistent. going to late one on the last day? Yeah. So obviously, last day, which had been fishing a bit funny, hadn't it? Yeah, very... Basically, on late one, sort of one to eight, you get a lot of smaller fish there, it's always consistent. But another thing is, with late one, it, it can, they can move around, and like, say, example, the 20s can be brilliant, which they have the last week or so. So I basically drew peg 15, and I thought... We've had loads of room as well, I thought... I'm not sure if I'm going to beat Lou, but I thought I'd still catch £200, if I'm honest. But I knew, sort of... When he drew, I thought it's going to be very, very hard to beat him because he had the wind off his back as well, and it, it come down. It suited him exactly what he, how he fishes. And to be fair, I think he'd have caught anyway. To be fair, but uh, anyway, about my match, just I started short. I, had, I think I had a couple of skimmers, and then I've had like a little spell on the feeder. I got up to sort of forty-five pound, and then I literally I just couldn't get by, and I could see Luke emptying it, so I knew straight away like I'm, I can't catch him here. And uh, basically, I've not already caught hardly anything. And then obviously, I filled the margins in after like two hours because you need to you need to have a go at this type of competition. When someone's in front of you, there's no point fishing half heartedly. You got to go for it. Yeah, you got to go for it. Yeah. I say it like, and I filled them in. There's been to be fair, there's been an odd fish there, but there's that many perch and stuff. They're taking corn and everything. It's like the worst experience I've had with small fish before. Like you couldn't get your bait in hardly. And uh, anyway, I caught a few late on, but I only had, well, only had, it sounds daft, I had £150, and Luke weighed £290 that day, so obviously, he fully deserved to win the event, like, yeah. that method he's got, like I say it about Luke, he's like the most, he's just naturally gifted angler, like, so aggressive, and, yeah, but anything he seems to do, he's, he seems to get good at it, he does everything his own way, yeah. Yeah, he won the event. He, last day he had £290, so well done to him. Like, fully deserved. He's like so good there. Uh, and I'll come second. I mean, it's hard to believe you'd come second with, what did I, I think, average about £250 a day. Yeah, which is just unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah. I'd like say five hour matches as well. It's like unbelievable. But yeah, it's like at the end of the day, second, had a good pick up. Second, it's a good result because obviously Luke just paralysed it, which. On that pace, honestly, it's like when it works, you, you're not beating him. Simple no, as that. No, he's just too good at it. Yeah, and obviously, like I can tell, like you've tried to turn into Bamford with some of your pots and that. To be fair to me, I had them pots. I didn't even know he had them. Oh right, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt. 
I will. I, and it's just, it's obviously a meeting of paste heads that we both saw it and thought, that's the pot for me. Yeah. But yeah, like I say, it's such a good angle. Luke. It's been a, unlucky over the years as well with certain things like going over his nets and stuff like that. But he's such a nice lad and yeah, he fully deserved to win. I mean, He's so good at that glebe as well, doing what he does on that. He's just like, yeah, he's, such a, he's probably an angler that goes under the radar too much, probably so good. For those that don't know, he fishes long on the bottom with paste, but he absolutely fills it in with pellets, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean, I was talking, he actually showed me how he fishes it, and it, it's actually not rocket science what he does, and like I say, I'm not going to copy him or try and fish how he does, because you're not going to do something better I can't beat him doing it something he fishes and he basically just fishes like green swims in pace and just bladders loads of four mils in. He feeds like up to like eight, well, between six and 12 pints of four mil pellets, <laughs> which no one else would think, even think of doing. And I think that's why it's so good because he's aggressive and he does his own thing. So the fish are almost not used to seeing what he does. And then he caught a load in the edge some of the days, didn't he? Yeah, he's just, he's just a brilliant angler. I mean, when it comes to pace fishing, I honestly don't think there's many better if not. No, I know, he's the, he's the best. He's done it for years consistently. I'll tell you what, Sam. This has gone really good. Is it? What, across? Now I've like stopped fanning around trying to find different spots and just gone Stuck where I started it. and actually concentrated. Yeah. It's a fish of chuck now. It's unreal, isn't it? I'm actually catching them, like lowering my rigging. Does that make sense? Like, like on the drop almost? Yeah. I tried shallow a minute ago, but I couldn't catch them shallow, but actually like slowly lowering my float in in amongst my pellets seems to be really good. It's like the one of, it's like the odd ones coming up and then they're going down, isn't it? So I'm like lifting my float out. Got them there on the drop. Putting my pellets in and then just like slowly lowering it down and then look like that, they just pull my elastic out. I've just done exactly the same as that. It's almost like it's not deep enough for them to come shallow properly, is no. it? But they're obviously watching the pellets down and I'm starting to see an old swirl in the edge. Yeah, like I mean I can, I can see why you like it. It's a lovely venue, hey, oh, isn't it? Chub. Chub? Hey. That's, not, that's not like you, is it? Look at that. So you're not on cheese paste or something? On the cheddar. So what, obviously that Glebe Cup, that was a, that was an, another nice sort of little match. Yeah. What's next then, Sam? Uh, I'm trying to think now. <laughs> obviously, we'll talk about qualifiers. I'm going to do some more qualifiers, which... Yep. Like I say, they're not the nicest things in the world. No, but you, they are a necessary evil if that's the route you want to go down, aren't they? Yeah. Like I was saying earlier, like if you, you can't win these events without being in them, so you've got to do them. But one thing I will say is I won't do too many of them, and I like to try and mix my fishing up so I keep like enjoying it. So what's coming up really is it's just like a few qualifiers, a um, few open matches, feeder master qualifiers. Yeah, just see what I can qualify and just the main thing is just enjoy what you're doing like say if you had a, a couple of bad matches not catch a lot on these qualifiers just go and fish a couple of opens and like catch some fish basically yeah but yeah it's basically it's just uh just keep enjoying it and I don't really try to plan what I'm doing too much especially with qualifiers I'll like see what the weather's like and stuff like that before I buy it as well because say if you went I'm trying to think of an example like I don't know, somewhere like Hallcroft, and it's blowing an absolute gale and raining. Like, it's gonna be, a lot of the pegs are hardly gonna be able to fish. And it's like, it's a lot of money and stuff to throw, especially if you're not gonna enjoy it. I think it's another thing it's worth mentioning as well, just like look at the conditions and then, there's loads of qualifiers I mean, and matches and stuff you get on. So like, if you're thinking, oh, the weather's not gonna be good for that type of thing and you're not gonna enjoy it, there's plenty of other matches and it's got like a feeder masters or something like that. Oh, so you actually leave you don't book them weeks in advance or anything? No, I, only if it's... Fish show you have to, don't you? But. Yeah, but say if it's the Glebe, or places that I know I will do, because obviously I know hey, I've got a slurper there now. If I feel like I've got a good chance at the venue, or I know it really well, then I'll obviously commit, but if I'm going to go somewhere, I don't... It's say, like, I don't know, Hallcroft's a good example, where it can blow a gale, and a lot of time you've got to draw an end peg. Do I really want to spend all that money committing to it when I know I'm going to struggle to fish and have a day's fishing. Yeah, makes sense. If you know what I mean, like I, I try to sort of look at the conditions and look what's on at the weekend and decide what I'm going to do, really. Or do like you did last week, draw your peg and go on the trend. That's <laughs> it, yeah. Like I say, it's no point. If you, 
it's your hobby at the end of the day. There's no point sitting there and not enjoying your day. I think that's the, I think that's the thing. You see a lot of people, and I speak to a lot of people, they're like, oh, I'm not enjoying it, or like do something else then, like go on the river or mix it up. So obviously I know you do your chub fishing and stuff like that. and Yeah, it's winter fishing soul destroying, isn't it? And yeah. I, um, I spoke about it before, why I went down that route, but for those who haven't... Um, For those who haven't seen, I do a lot of like specimen chub fishing in the winter. Like, in fact, I don't, I haven't fished a match in the winter for two years. And um, basically, what happened was I, uh, <laughs> it's a long story, but I, me and my wife lost a baby, and um, my head was an absolute shed, as you can imagine. And I just at the, at the time it was COVID, and you couldn't fish matches. I don't know if you remember, and. Um, Rob Wharton actually rang me and he's like, what do you want, what are you up to? And I'm like, I just need to get out of the house basically. And I, we both went chub fishing on this little river near me. I had a great day, caught a few fish, went for a walk and it sorted me right out. And I guess I just got hooks on it ever since. Yeah. <laughs> and um, I've absolutely loved it. And I, I literally commit my winter to it now, like chasing these massive chub. And I've had some seven pounders, some six pounders. And I just love it. And, Rather than dragging myself through matches that I don't want to be on, I do that, pick and choose when I go, and then come the spring, I'm raring to go again. And There's a lot of fishing, isn't there? It's not just match fishing. I think that's, I think that's the main... That's exactly how I feel with it, Joe. It's like, at the end of the day, because if, if you feel like you want to go fishing, you don't have to do the same thing week in, week out. Like, even if it's out your comfort zone, you've never done it, just go and have a go and then just... Yeah, it might... Look at that, nice fish. It might not be chub fishing, it might not be pike fishing, it might, it might just be changing your venue or something, but there's a lot to be said for mixing it up and enjoying Definitely. it. And that, and that for me, that, that chub fishing has been a, ma a massive breath of fresh air, I absolutely love it. And I literally can't wait for it to start again. Yeah, it's like for me as well, like that's, that's my latest thing I'm like, I'm having to go, it's like river fishing for like, on the trend, trying to catch like, I'm trying to work out how to catch like barbel and chub, and it's like, like you say, it's like a breath of fresh air. It's all new, and I think when you're doing something new as well, it keeps you more interested because you don't know what's going to happen and now you're you learning work things again, out. You? Whereas, say, example, we come on these matches, and everyone goes through it. You have times where you're like, it's all very repetitive, and it's like everything's the same. Where if you keep mixing your fishing up, it's like I, I like doing a bit of like, like sort of reservoir feeder fishing and stuff, and I'll go and do that, and it's. I must. Have, I've been to Staunton filming, and you've been there with your dad. Yeah. Like I say, it's, it's a shame you can't day ticket fish it now. But oh, can't you? No, because they've changed the rules or something, so you have to be a member. But so oh, I went there at the weekend. I had like thirty pound, and it just really it just mixes it up and it keeps everything interesting. That like personally, if I do, I couldn't do the same thing constantly oh. every single year doing the same thing. I want a bit of a challenge all the time. Yeah. It just keeps you like. It just keeps you interested, really. Keeps you fresh. Yeah, it's like, it's like anything. If you did something week in, week out, you're eventually going to have enough of it a bit. Well, Sam, we've had a good little uh, little chin wag there. Yeah. I'm going to fill it in. I'm going for I it. Want, I want to catch some edge fish before we uh, wrap up. But tell me about where you're going next week. Because it kind of follows on from what we've just been talking about. Yeah, so basically... I'm going to the River Wye, just with the family uh, for a week and basically doing a bit of barbel and chub fishing on the uh, River Wye. It's something I've never done. And it's like basically this sort of um, fishing for on the rivers for barbel and chub. It's all new to me. And, you know, I'm really looking forward to it again because it's something different. It's something I've never done and it's like, it's wild, which I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, you're going to have an amazing time. That's it. Yeah, it's like I say, it's... Hey, if this rain keeps up, you might have a bit of fresh water. Yeah, going like I say, because obviously it's been a lot of rain recently. It might be up a bit, and it might, it might catch it on the right, in you the right conditions, maybe. You might have timed it perfect. Yeah, on a week away, and I can't remember exactly where it is because my me, me memory's terrible. But um, somewhere on the wire, on a, a nice week there, and yeah, it's something different, and I'm really looking forward to it. If you're doing that, I'm going low fishing off the south coast. Lovely. Um, well, family holiday, but then they don't wake up till 8 o'clock, so I'll be on the river. You'll be straight there, won't you? 
Uh, not on the river, on the sea. <laughs> That's what I tell you. What I'm going to shout out my local tackle shop, Chilton Bait, because um, obviously online shopping is everything these days, isn't it? For a lot of people. Yeah. But one thing that online shopping doesn't give you is that advice and help, which I think a lot of people overlook now. And I just so happened to mention to Dave in Chilton Bates that where I was going on holiday, and he's like, "You would you believe it? I go there almost every year." Yeah. Low fishing. He's like, and um, he told me all the spots to go to. He even got me all the kit I needed, like he lent me all his uh, lures and stuff. So, cheers, Dave. Um, nice of him. And that's why a local tackle shop's great, isn't it? Because they, they genuinely want to try and help you. Yeah, I mean, like you say, exactly that. Like, obviously, a lot of a lot of things nowadays are coming more and more to uh, obviously online because it's more convenient for people. And and, and online shopping's great. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but like you say, just them little. Them little things are like information and lend, like finding people out that's going to help you and all sorts like that. You miss out on by not by going online as such. Oh, I'd have been, I'd have just been going out the back of the hotel and trying to catch fish that probably weren't there. Whereas he told me like a few spots that are almost dead cert. So yeah, that's it. You miss, you're missing out. Well, you just pick up that value bits of information. So cheers, Dave. That's nice of him, isn't it? Very. Um. So how are you catching them, Sam? Right, so I actually last sort of I obviously started on my ground bait and maggot approach and it was alright, but obviously there's almost some like weed or something that's come off the bottom and it's made me spot go a bit sort of a bit snagging, a bit iffy. So I've just gone on my hard pellet line, I've had a good spell on the deck, fishing like a 4x16 Fury and just like feeding four mil pellets, fishing a six banded six mil. I've actually just picked up my little shallow rig, which is the uh, a 4x10 big head and I've just got like two number 10s on top of my up link, six inch up link and set about a foot deep and just had a few on it. I can hear a few in the grasses, which can be obviously a really, really good tactic on its day on these snake lakes. Yeah, I mean, I can't catch them shallow. I keep trying, but I'm, like I say, I'm catching them just like lowering the rig down and they're taking it on the drop. Yeah. As I'm sort of lowering it in. It's really... yeah, it almost seems like they don't, they don't want to be quite on the bottom, but they don't want to be dead shallow. It's almost like you say, they almost want to follow it down. But I can see one in the grass now. I might even be a bit too deep, I'm about a foot deep. Yeah, what sort of depth have you got across there, Joe? It's exactly two foot, but I reckon if I could get 18 inches, it'd be absolutely perfect, but yeah. I can't in this peg. And... Yeah, like I say, with my peg, it's you've sort of got better scenarios than yours because I can get in that sort of shallow water corner. You but obviously you've been fishing this venue lots and you've been sort of talking about, obviously the mud line's not how you used to remember and it's deep. Well, mo like... most, most uh, the, the swims I've drawn so far have been three foot across the far bank. Yeah. So even this one's a better one than I've been faced with recently, but you can catch them in that depth, can't you? you just got a fish distance. Yeah, like I say, like obviously, I've been speaking to you recently, and like I say, you the first time you come, I believe you try. You're thinking of fishing like your meat mush and stuff like that, and yeah, you put a plummet on, and it you're like, what's going on here? And you've almost had to like refine your approach. Yeah, that's changed. What they just they really <laughs> like pellets here. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like dead interesting because obviously I've been catching a lot of fish and sort of like ground bait, micros, maggots, that sort of thing. And obviously you're saying obviously hard pellets are great. And uh, like I say, they've been absolutely brilliant. They seem to like really love them, but you've almost got like fish of all sizes, sizes which pellets are really good bait for, isn't it? So I'm gonna have a go, shall I? So obviously you've been with us, I don't know, four or five months think now? It, oh, I'm, I'm trying to think when it was now. It's about it's something like that, isn't it? About, about four or five months, I'd say. About February time from memory. How are you finding it? Yeah, like I say, I'm really liking it. I mean, obviously it's a, brand that have got big plans for the future really it's obviously like looking to grow in the main thing is with it like, i like it's all sort of fresh and like i say i was speaking to like joe and stuff it's like products that's so like are so good which i don't even know about to be honest with you yeah because obviously since joe's come in he's obviously like done his art media stuff and he's showing like the stuff it's there and it's like you say my size tray set up 
that like, it's probably been the best I've ever had so far. Like it's bang on for what I need and like I say, there's like little things like the kit markers and stuff like that. They're just a brilliant idea. And the, yeah, and the floats like, have yeah. obviously gone really well. And like the pole floats, like the Furies, nice and shallow now. Yeah, I've just put my shallow rig on and. But yeah, it's like, for example, the pole floats, then the Fury floats. Like they've been really, really, really good for me. I mean, of course, I've been using the same float because we actually sold out, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. I've been using the same float for weeks and weeks and weeks. I've got like ridiculous amounts of fish on it. It's still going strong now, and it's just like I really like. You can have a look at your box if you if you want to. And I've got like loads of them tied up because I'm that like, confident in them. And it's got the big heads as well. I think there's. The products they're bringing out are just like really good. Yeah, it's good, good to hear. It's um, we're on the up, that's for sure. And it's um, it was a sleeping giant, and the lads are putting so much effort in with products and stuff that it's going to be great. And uh, the good thing is obviously about new fish, which is blowing our own trumpet, is the products are all reasonably priced as well. Which yeah, obviously in this day and age is a Sam, they're starting to swirl in the edge. Hello. So I'm just uh, trying to catch these fish shallow. Yeah. Rather than firing baiting and potentially ruining my bottom, I'm my bottom swim. I'm just potting over the top. That one pulled the elastic out. Getting a bite every chuck in, but I'm just uh, missing them. <laughs> How deep are you catching them? You what, mate? How deep are you catching them? About 12 inches. It's like it's weird. Earlier I caught a couple on it. They weren't brilliant, but now there's more and more liners for whatever reason. I don't know if it's the time of day or anything like that, but I've seen an odd one come up and there's a lot more liners, so I've just picked this rig up and I've, so I'll get a few bites on it, a little cop. But yeah, these these big, big head floats are like, so good for this sort of thing, aren't they? Yeah, you know, I like shallow and... It's probably worth saying that we've actually, uh, for the second drop that are in shops now, we've actually uh, updated them. We've put an eye, a side eye as well as the inline body, which we're hoping. We're not hoping. We've tested it and uh, has made them even better. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously we've been out doing a few features and videos, and we put them, we put some serious stick on them. Like we went making the last one doing a shallow fishing video, and they're just really, really good, and they're so like they're just absolutely perfect for the job they do because you've got a four mil, is it a four mil tip, I believe. Four mil bristle, yeah. Yeah, four mil bristle. The beauty is you em. can fish like a six mil pellet, an eight mil pellet, and you don't have to change the shot on your float. Where I've had floats in the past, say, you want to try like an eight mil on your hook when you're like mugging or shallow, and you've got to take a shot off and then put one on again for a different bait, which gets kind of a nuisance. Whereas with these floats, they sort of suspend, suspend both up uh, really good. I, re I really, really like them. I mean, I know as well, you've been using them for F1 Shallow, haven't you? Yeah, I just, it's all I use now. I just <coughs> I just really like them. And yeah. Work well for me, and people probably think they're probably a bit thick for F1s, but I've found them really good, to be fair. I dot them down, and they seem to work nice. See, I, I cannot catch them shallow. It's funny, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So, Sam, I think we're going to get absolutely drenched in a minute. Yeah, it looks a bit... Looks a bit uh, grey and it looks like I'm going to get a bit wet soon, Joe, doesn't it? Yeah, so we'll um, we'll get it to an end. I'm just going to try and catch one more. I've just uh, seen what you're doing with that big head and I've set one up myself. Yeah. So there we go. Let's take one. It's been very good shallow, isn't it? Hey, I've been watching you do it and it's definitely been, been a good <coughs> way, that. Just um, while we're catching a few, just to finish up, you want to let the people know how you how you're doing it? Yeah. So obviously, like I said, started on maggot and ground bait across um, in the shallow water to me right in about 18 inches, and uh, it was good. And then there was obviously there's still like some weed or something on the bottom, and it's drifted around and it's made it almost a bit snaggy. So we come off that and basically we're fishing hard pellets on the bottom, just sort of feeding sort of like a dozen sort of four mils and the six mil on the up, which was good for a spell. Caught a lot of mixed sized carp and few better ones but basically what happened was we sort of got a few liners odd bar look and we could tell the fish were coming off 
up off the bottom. So uh, I've picked a little shallow rig up, which is just a uh, 4x10 sort of big head, and I've started around 12 inches deep, which it's probably like two and a bit foot over there, so just above half depth probably. And yeah, it's, it was sort of steady, and then it's just got better and better, and now they're just like ripping the elastic out and uh, catching them at eight inches deep. And uh, it's a little it's a little six mil pellet on the hook, so it just stands out a bit more. And yeah, it's been it's been really good. Little, I like say, little four by ten big head, so you can just sort of shove it in the grasses, and it's not nice and light, so the hook bait falls uh, naturally, and just lifting and dropping, and catch plenty of carp. Pretty simple, really. Just spraying four mil pellets, and it's been a fishy chunk, isn't it, Joe? Since we've been sort of changed to yeah, it. Yeah, really good now, isn't it? And... Yeah, I mean, it's, obviously it's the first, like I say, it's the first time I've visited this place and I'll definitely be back. It's, it's a lovely venue and it's... Uh, Good fishing, isn't it? Yeah, and what I, what I quite like about it, when you look at all the lake, it's obviously like a big sort of snake lake and every peg sort of got something a bit different to offer. Great, great big F1, this one, Sam. Is it? Yeah. You won the F1 challenge. You've also had a goldfish as well, haven't you? Look at that. I've had a barbel, a tench, goldfish, and now I've just caught the biggest F1 of the day. Yeah, you're beating me on the species challenge by... By a long way. I can only catch carp. Well, they're the match winners. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I can see why you've been uh, enjoying, enjoying the matches here. It's, it's um, nice. I'll tell you what I quite like about it as well. Every peg's different. Yeah. Like your peg, you've got that option with the shallow water. So you could you, you could fish that, you could fish shallow. Like this here, I've got no cover opposite, but just to my left there, there's that lovely there's a little tiny patch of reeds. It's perfect for spraying and praying, isn't it? Yeah. Like I say, that's. I think that's the thing what I can see why people like it, because some of it's a bit more sort of... You've got to use your watercraft because there's lots of features, different depths and everything. You've got to work out what's best for your peg. But by far, pellet's been the best, like you've already uh, worked out. Obviously, like you said, it'd be good because you've obviously been coming and... Uh, it's just nice fishing, like you... You're sitting there, you've got to change, change your rig all the time and keep in touch with the fish it's just not like you sit on something and it works all day is it no in the in the matches i've been coming on like fishing on the bottom and just taking what comes has been the best yeah but today definitely shallow just so quick in it when they come yeah i mean i'm missing bites at eight inches now I probably could go to six but it, it screams out like fishing up and down with pellets because obviously like you're saying a lot of the pegs are quite deep, so you can't really fish ground bait and micros and that sort of baits effectively. So I can see what you mean about hard pellets being good. I always think you could, obviously I don't know the venue well, but I could see casters being good on another day. On them deeper, deeper swims, even fishing a bit of worm or something on the up. <coughs> Yeah, it's uh, good now. It's really good. It's just got better and better, really. Have you got one? Yeah, We've same got a dog. Double, a double, double to end Double up. look up, yeah. And also, nice thing with it, you've got a mixture of fish. So you've got anything literally caught from 12 ounces all the way up to like six or seven pounds, didn't you? Yeah. And like you say, the fish you've been catching on the paste are like a lot bigger, isn't they? So it's just not like you're fishing the same thing all day you still can get out of jail so if you're not doing okay. not really doing anything in the first few hours you can also have a run late on in the edge yeah, and definitely there's still uh, do some damage like there's all sorts of fish in here all sorts of different stamps and uh, it's just a great fishery so if you're in the rugby area daventry area i live over northampton way and it's not far from me it's, uh, it's a great venue there's actually loads of pegs here and that rain has just started so thanks for that sam yeah, no probably Enjoyed the day, Joe, thanks. And uh, before we get soaked, I'm going to have to have another go, but that's it. Thanks for everyone for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, we'll see you again on the next vlog. We'll have Mick will be back next time. So he's got loads to catch up on. He's been on the World Feeder Championships. He's going on the World Club Championships for Bouncy Black. So absolutely loads to catch up on with Mick when he comes back. But our special guest Sam done us proud today. So thanks everyone and we'll see you again on the next one.